Hello, hello everyone, nice to meet you. And let's start today's talks of the Battle of the Giants, Elasticsearch 4.0, uh, let's get back. Apache Solar 4.0 versus Elasticsearch 0.20. It was not released yet, but it should be soon. Uh, we have a release candidate right now available, so let's get it done. First of all, something about me. I'm a Solar 3.1 cookbook author with an update incoming, hopefully soon, before 4.1. I'm a Sematex consultant and a software engineer. I'm SolarPL co-founder, maybe you're familiar with it. Uh, and I'm a father and a husband, so that's... Today's talk will be concerned about Elasticsearch versus Apache Solar. What we can expect from one, what can, can we expect from the second one, or vice versa, and which one is the better one. Hopefully, we'll get the answer, or maybe not, we'll see. Uh, so basically, what we have under the hood of those two. In Elasticsearch, we have Apache Lucene 361, uh, the latest stable release still when Elasticsearch wo was developed. Uh, Elastic, the newer Elasticsearch versions will be based, hopefully, on Lucene 4.0. In Apache Solar 4.0, we all know we have Lucene 4.0 with all the goodies, all the codecs and stuff you probably heard about till now, sort of cloud and stuff like that. Basically, um, I'll try to compare not only the uh, single server view of solar, but uh, also the uh, cloud features, because uh, Elasticsearch is narrowed to cloud, as you may know. It works on a single server, but was designed with cloud in, view in mind, as and in Apache Solar for all, we, has, we have solar cloud, which allows us to use distributed indexing, searching, scale vertically, and things like that, and horizontally. First of all, some general view. What we expect from a search server architecture? We expect scalability, we'll expect fault tolerance, high availability, and of course, features. We want to use faceting, we want full text search queries, we want all of that. We want grouping, we want, we want collapsing. Uh, anyway, the same thing. We also want some spam queries for, we also want filtering and all things like that. But also, we are looking for the ease of installation, all the tools that are available out there, because not all of us uh, are pleased with the out of the box features. We want plugins. And finally, we would like to easily manage our instances, to create new, new nodes, to manage our clusters. That's what we expect. In Elasticsearch, of course, we've got all those things. Elasticsearch is distributed, it's fault tolerant, all contains of only Elasticsearch nodes, that's one thing. It has a single leader, maybe a lip, uh, something like a master, and it has an automatic leader election based on discovery, but we will talk about it a bit later. Of course, it's highly durable, fault tolerant, as I told, and it scales. As salt cloud, we have similar things. It's distributed, fault tolerant, it's based on Apache Solar, and of course, Zookeeper Ensemble, which handles all the needed things to keep Solar Cloud running. It has leader per shard, as you probably heard today, and it, again, has automatic leader election, so when the shard goes down and it was a leader, the new leader comes up. Of course, it's, if it's possible. Before going into much more specific d details, I would like to say a bit about the index or collection architecture. In Solar, we have collection. It's the main logical index that can be spread among different shards, right? In Elasticsearch, the same, almost the same thing is called an index. It also has uh, shards, replicas, and stuff like that. Again, collection and indices can be spread among nodes in the cluster to create distributed environment. In addition to that, Elasticsearch allows us to have a multiple type of documents in a single index. Uh, from a user perspective view, uh, the index is, div uh, index is divided into types. Each document has a type div uh, connected to it. In Apache Solar, we can do that, but all those types share the same schema. Of course, uh, in Elast as well as uh, Solar and Elasticsearch, both of those documents are still uh, written into the same index, but uh, Elasticsearch allows us to a bit more, a bit more complicated stuff when it comes to typing. 
some things about shards and replicas. Uh, as I mentioned, index and collections can have many shards. Each shard can have zero or more replicas. The more replicas we have redundancy, we can scale the search. Replicas are automatically updated with the use of transaction logs in both cases. So, you can, so we have durable updates. And replicas can be promoted to leaders when the leader shard goes offline. So if your node fails or anything bad happens or some nodes of the cluster goes offline, if you have a replica of such nodes or node nodes, shards, you can be sure that they will be promoted to new leaders and you will be still able to search and index data. However, there are sometimes, uh, we are sometimes needed, at least in my work as a consultant, with uh, at least once, a three, three months or something like that, struggle with the thing that our clients want to uh, control how the indexing is done. By default, Elasticsearch and Solar distribute the indices, uh, distribute the documents between uh, shards in a manner of hashing on the basis of the document ID. However, sometimes it's not enough. Imagine a situation when you would like to, uh, when you have an index containing thousands of your client's document, and uh, the client document base is, ba is divided uh, into users. And each user can only search in its given pool of documents. That way you can optimize your indices if the amount of data is high, that uh, a single user can be pointed to a single shard, and there, its documents are indexed into that one particular shard. And, a query, and when a query comes in, we would like it to be routed into that one particular shard. And both Elasticsearch and Solar allows that, although we'll see um, some, something, just uh, some visualization. Let's say we have a collection or an index with eight shards, uh, I didn't divide it into multiple nodes just for the ease of the look. So we have eight shards of an index, and our application don't know where the data is. So what we would have to do is we just want to query all the shards, gather the results, and return it. That's sometimes not needed, because we know that, for example, the data is stored for that particular user in the third shard, and we want just to query it because the other data will be, for example, filtered by a filter query. Mm, what we can do with routing is we can do just exactly the same, but we can point our search server to just that one particular shard. In this example, it's the third shard. So what we can do in, in solar, uh, it requires some effort. It's, uh, we have to um, um, configure the proper update. Requ Let's go a bit here. Update re request process and chain with the NOOP distributing update processor factory, and we have to put the data there by, for, by knowing which shard we want. If the shard has a, if it's a leader, if not, it will be distributed. In Elasticsearch, we have something called routing. Routing parameter allows us to control which target, which shard will be targeted with the data or queries. Uh, of course, it defaults uh, to document identifiers, but can be changed to any value during runtime. You don't have to reload the configuration. So if we specify something like that, and we say that in the index, semi-text in the type text for the document with the ID 1, we want it to be routed with that particular value. Elasticsearch would take the value, calculate the hash on it, and will put the data in the shard that is uh, evaluated but, the, but that particular value. And during querying, you can see that a simple query will, will be routed with the same value. You can imagine that with hundreds of, uh, hundreds of uh, routing parameters, some data will land in the same shards, but when querying, you don't have to query all the shards. That's some improvement uh, over for performance that you can achieve if you can divide your data in that way. Mm. Let's get back a bit to the index structure now. Let's forget about routing and let's get back to the index structure. We can have, of course, solar is uh, schema structured, right? We have field types defined in schema. We have fields defined in schema. Of course, we can use dynamic fields. We have the copy field uh, possibilities with the automatic copying between fields. And of course, the one thing right now, it allows us to use custom similarity definition, both global ones, 
and both per field similarity. It's great. Actually, we use it uh, in a few deployments, and it's really great. We can customize the scoring for each field. It's useful. In Elasticsearch, we can say more or less Elasticsearch is schemaless. Uh, not that schemaless as we put data and we don't worry about the schema. Not that way. Elasticsearch tries to guess the data that is put there. On the first, when f the first document is indexed, the um, Elasticsearch al analyzes it and tries to guess the, the type of the field. It can be painful if the guess is not right. Mm, that's uh, a thing you probably won't use in production. Maybe it's good when you push your data, uh, like we have some data in the JSON, we want to put it right now, we want to test it, we want to play with it, we want our developers to go with it, but in real life you will want to mm, structure your data, you want to prepare the mappings, as it's called in Elasticsearch. However, let's continue. Analyzers and filters are defined both with HTTP APIs and can be both set in the Elasticsearch configuration files. That's one thing very nice because you can create indices on the fly and specify the, the, field, ty the field types, the analysis. Uh, the same comes with the fields. Uh, there is a multi-field support. It's more or less the same as the um, copy field feature in Solar. Elasticsearch allows you to get multiple fields with similar names, let's call it, and uh, the data will be um, copied into that multiple fields. Uh, for example, for different field for searching, different field for faceting, but uh, all uh, with the similar names. One, for example, name and one name.facet. Allows for nested documents which is nice, you can nest documents, you can have one primary document, and you can have multiple nested documents that will land into the same shard, and you, you can be sure of that. Allows parent-child relationship in the index time. That's one thing, because we will talk about it uh, in a minute. Uh, you can specify the parent of a document you are currently indexing. Uh, so if you want to index the main document, you can specify the, the parent. And for example, you can index the main document and the tags for the document as each tag for a different document. Then you can, using the partial updates, for example, remove or you can delete all the, all the child documents and allow structured data. You can send structured data and Elasticsearch will uh, get those and flatten it for you. Because, as you know, Elasticsearch is based on Lucene and we don't have the ability maybe yet, to have the uh, relationships uh, in the index. Uh, both, Elas uh, uh, both Elasticsearch and Solar allows for some degree of index manipulation, actually not an index, and an index structure manipulation. Uh, in both cases, pos possible to some extent, you can, for example, add new field to the index, it's not a problem. Uh, s you can't change integer to string or you can't change numeric types, right? Because Lucene bl will blow up. Uh, that's usual. But for example, in Elasticsearch, you can change it, uh, change a single field to a multi-field, and uh, in the re-index your document, you will have two, three, or many fields. But that's similar, you add the copy field and re-index document in Solar, and you get exactly the same behavior. Let's get to the aliasing. Uh, Solar allows you to al alias cores. It's currently, as I remember, marked as experimental uh, feature. Yeah, looking at the committers. Uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, Elasticsearch, on the other hand, allows you to create some kind of uh, SQL views. You can, uh, uh, with an alias, uh, create it for an index. For example, you want, you will, we will have a Again, let's get back to the users example. We have multiple users and we want to get the users only the view of their data. We can create an alias, for example, named by the user name or something like that, and we can add filters to that alias. We can add routing, search, both search and index time, and we can just say, okay, use that alias, and you will get only the data you are, you are allowed to. That's something, something pretty fine. Index can have multiple aliases. There can be multiple aliases in Elasticsearch. So something like that. The server configuration. Mm, static install config for Solar. K 
can be reloaded during uh, collection or core reload. Uh, for example, if you store it in Zookeeper and you update it, you will be able to reload it when the color collection or core reloads. Uh, in Elasticsearch, you can set the static parameters in Elasticsearch.yml uh, property file, and some of the properties, I don't, don't know to, uh, how, may, how much of those, don't know the percentage value, but you can change some of the values during runtime without the need of restarting the server or the need to close re, uh, reload uh, indices or anything like that. I'll talk, a bit, uh, I'll talk about it uh, a bit later. There is a, in solar, I didn't have, don't have a slide for it, but in solar your indices are stored locally. If you don't configure it, for example, in an F NFS or anything like that. In Elasticsearch, um, you have a gateway module, which is more or less your data and uh, metadata time machine. Uh, it, it can store, because uh, it, not on, it not always stores indices, but it's used to store metadata. Currently available, you have the local default one and the one that is set to be used because it's most tested. Uh, you have the shared file system, you have the Hadoop and S Amazon TS S3, which you can use for storing your indices uh, and metadata. For example, if you use the shared FS uh, gateway, um, your, your uh, shared file system should be visible by all the nodes out there uh, in the cluster. So that's, um, if you would like to use it, However, even the um, wiki page of Elasticsearch says, if you don't have to use those three, use the local one. It's the default and should be the best. Uh, the discovery. The process of discovery is the process of discovering new nodes, adding new nodes to the cluster, adding, uh, managing the nodes. Apache Solar uses Zookeeper, as we all heard about. And Elastic, uh, Elasticsearch uses Zen Discovery, its own module, uh, and we'll talk about it in a bit. What it, uh, what it can do is, for Elasticsearch, it's allowed. Automatic node discovery provides multicast and unicast discovery methods, so whenever your um, network supports multicast, you can use multicast. Whenever it's not supported, you can use unicast discovery and just say which nodes, which nodes are, should be in your cluster and it will be. Uh, and they will be pinged and talked to. It has an automatic master detection and of course two-way failure detection, master node pings all the other nodes in the cluster and the nodes ping the master to see if it's still alive. Some kind of uh, heartbeat uh, mechanism. Uh, developed by Elasticsearch. Uh, in Solar, we have Zookeeper. We heard about Zookeeper. It requires additional software, although it's not a problem, uh, at least from my point of view, because Zookeeper is very easy to install and uh, run. Mm, of course, uh, if you want, uh, if you don't want a single point of failure, you should have one or, uh, more than one Zookeeper instances. It prevents one thing that it prevents, and it's very uh, good from my point of view, again, as a consultant. It prevents split brain situations. I don't like being <laughs> mailed in the night and says, ah, we've got a cluster divided, and we've got two separate clusters out there that don't, can't join each other because there was a split brain and the data went to one and to the second cluster. That's terrible. It's hard to get back to what it used to be before the split brain. Uh, Apache Zookeeper uh, handles that. You can't have a uh, split brain in solar cloud. Uh, there are also um, possibilities in handling that in Elasticsearch by setting the minimum masters. So you should set the minimum master to be at least 50% plus one node in your. Of course, it can hold collection configuration that should. And Sol needs to know the addresses of one of the Zookeeper instances in order to, key, to talk to it. API. As you know, if I didn't ask one thing, how many of you uh, know Apache Solar? Great. And now the other thing, how many of you know Elasticsearch? Okay, okay. So, again, uh, both Solar and Elasticsearch allows us to use query string for queries. In Solar, um, the query string is 
the most, well, maybe not most convenient, but the method we use to query it. In Elasticsearch, it's not only uh, the only method. We can and we should use the structured JSON queries in order to uh, make our queries. And they both provide a specialized Java API uh, in SolarJ for Sol Cloud. You should use the Cloud Sol server, which talks to Zookeeper and is quite nice. In order to do that, it knows w which node to send the data. And in Elasticsearch, for the remote connections, you use the transport client. And you have also the client library. It, it's basically almost full Elasticsearch that is instantiated. Ah, sorry for my pronunciation. Uh, when, you, uh, when you start the transport client. But it's, uh, for now at least, it's uh, needed. The work is being done by some people for uh, allowing a bit abstraction to transport client. Uh, Apache Solar and Query String, uh, you all pr probably, most of you know Apache Solar, so some of the degree uh, of structure is allowed, for example, with local params and stuff like that. A simple query looks like that, nothing, nothing unusual. In Elasticsearch, uh, we can build queries or, uh, with the request uh, parameters, simple ones, but most queries should be done, the most complicated ones should be, qu should be done and sent as JSON object to a proper, uh, proper REST endpoint. For example, the first is the uh, s simple request param, and the second is a structured JSON query. Almost the same, but <coughs> almost, because the query above will be the match, and here we have the term query, which is not analyzed. Uh, but as you can see, there is some structure. You can, uh, if you don't know Elasticsearch, as, um, as most of the audience don't know, you can uh, nest multiple elements in the query, so you can combine queries, some of the queries can be multiple, can have multiple levels of nesting, as well as uh, filtering, faceting, and stuff like that. Mm, data handling. SOAR allows multiple formats as input and can result, can output results in multiple formats. If you want XML, if you want JSON, if you want comma separated values, you can do that in SOLAR, that's not a problem. In Elasticsearch, things are simple. JSON in, JSON out. Single or batch. Sing, as you know, SOLAR can, in a single request w with indexing data, you can add multiple documents per request. It's not a problem. Single or multi multiple documents in a request, just an XML or a JSON and you send it. In Elasticsearch, uh, a standard indexing request is a single document per request, but you have two end endpoints. The first one, the bulk, is the endpoint exposed for batch indexing. You can have multiple documents in a document, but the documents have to be structured so that additional information is provided, like ID, the index, and the type. Uh, there is a second endpoint, the bulk UDP endpoint, that for low latency indexing, but should be, also, should be only used when you are not afraid of losing your data. You know how UDP works and it can, if there is a network failure or anything like that, you can use your batch. Both search servers provide partial document updates. They are not, ba not based on the 3.8, uh, 3.7 uh, Lucene uh, Jira issue, which was proposed by Andre. Uh, what it, uh, what it does is actually it requires stored field on an Elasticsearch uh, for uh, source, and it uh, just gets the, the original document and just um, applies all the changes that are needed and re-index the document. Both servers can use versioning to prevent changes being overwritten. And of course, it leads to decreased uh, traffic over your network. So if you have multiple updates and you need that, it's fine to use it. Uh, however, uh, you have to remember that you have, need to have the version in Solar, also in Elasticsearch as well. And in addition to that, uh, you need to have those fields stored or in Solar. In, if you don't have, you won't have the full document re-indexed. You will lose your data, some of it. Uh, the, same with, uh, the same with Elasticsearch. If you don't have source, it won't work. Mm. In Elasticsearch, there is a special... Uh, 
A special endpoint exposed, it uh, supports parameters similar to index API, so it uh, supports routing, uh, stuff like percolate, parent, and stuff and anything like that. And uh, Elasticsearch uses scripts to perform updates, and just a view of how such update works. It's a simple sc script that says that to s set the field enabled to a value enabled and the value is actually provided here. You can also set it uh, in a script, but Elasticsearch allows you to have multiple params so you can easily edit. Mm. In Solar, you, you set, sent it to the update handler, which is now very fine and great. It sees all the, all the data. You, can, you don't have to use the JSON, CVS, and stuff like that. It requires version, as I said, and a simple, a simple request. Uh, with the JSON setting for setting the enabled true for the document with the provided ID. Uh, let's get a bit about managing. Uh, Solar provides collection API, which is built on top of core admin API. It actually uses core admin API and provides three operations. Collection creation, collection reload, and collection deletion. You can, for example, create new collections on the fly, reload them, to see the changes in the zookeeper uh, made to your configurations, and you f can delete collections, and it's all made on the fly. You don't have to restart the servers. You don't need to do anything uh, other than uh, use the API. Mm, in Elasticsearch, we have similar, similar functionalities. The index creation deletion, in addition to that, you can close and open an indices. For example, mm, if you have uh, your data, uh, divided into days. For example, you create a new uh, index for each day, and you have those thousands. That can happen. You can close indices that you don't uh, want, but you w don't want to throw them out away. For example, imagine that you search for 100 days of data. Uh, but some of the functionalities, for example, for marketing department or any statistical features or applications, require some amount of data, but rarely. So you can close that indices, those indices uh, during normal work and, for example, open them for night, do the processing, and then close them again. You've, it will release some amount of resources, of system resources, that may be needed during the normal searching. Uh, in addition to that, you can refresh your index and check the existence of the index with an AP call, API. Um, now, the chain, chain definition. Uh, in Solar, your field types uh, and the definition of your analysis is static in schema XML. You can, of course, divide it into dynamic fields, have multiple field types, but those can be only reloaded during uh, runtime with collection core reload. You have to modify your schema, you have to put it in Zookeeper and reload. In Elasticsearch, it can be both static in the Elasticsearch YML file, but it can be also defined during index type creation, and, then can, and it can be updated uh, to some extent again. You can't ch change an integer to string, or vice versa. But some of the mapping uh, updates are possible. Multilingual data handling. As you know, Apache Solar wins that one because it's built on top of Lucene 4.0, and uh, Lucene 4.0 provides mo much more uh, language, capabil language handling capabilities. Uh, for example, the new stammer for my home language, like Polish, like the morphologic one. Uh, but they, also, but uh, they all provide multiple language. Solar can have, of course, and again, I'll say that again, SOAR analyzers are defined per field in schema. Elasticsearch analyzers can be defined in the mappings, again, uh, or in the uh, configuration file, but also can be set during query or specified per field basis, uh, during requests or during queries. Uh, it allows you to choose the analyzer your query will be actually analyzed by in the current moment. So it's not only based on the fields, but also based on the request parameters or query parameters you send. That's, that can be f very good when you know, for example, which language your query is. It's not, it's not easy because queries are usually small and uh, language analysis usually works better on large documents, but that can come in handy. Mm. 
feature only reserved for solar for now, results grouping, aka field collapsing, uh, allows for grouping based on field value, query, or a function query. Uh, I think the more that function query grouping is not available for distributed searching. Uh, at least that was uh, when I last checked it. Uh, again, now the thing that is not available in solar, the prospective search called in Elasticsearch as a percolator, it allows you to register to inverse the searching. Instead of uh, querying uh, for documents, you send the document and get queries in result. You store queries in the index called percolator in memory index uh, Called, a uh, called in memory index, and uh, Elasticsearch returns the queries that were uh, you send a document, and Elasticsearch returns the queries that you registered that match the given document. For example, imagine an alerting uh, functionality that sh uh, that you use to monitor social uh, ne uh, social network services, and when a brand, for example, Coca-Cola or anything like that, comes up, you want a query that matched it to uh, show up, and that's what, can you, what prospective search can be used for. Spell checker, again, not uh, present in Elasticsearch till now, allows us to check and correct user spelling mist mistakes. There are uh, multiple uh, implementations available in Solar uh, index-based spell checker, the one that is uh, actually available for long period of time, the word break spell checker, direct spell to Solar spell checker, which is very good. Uh, new implementations incoming, like the fuzzy one. Mm, great functionality, uh, especially the direct soul spell checker, which doesn't use uh, its own separate index. Uh, it's pretty fast and effective and returns uh, pretty nice results, at least for English and Polish. Of course, both search engines uh, provide variety of queries for full text searching. You ha have the ability to control score calculation. Uh, you can have different query parsers available. This is especially uh, in solar, when you have multiple query parsers, where you, use, where you can use multiple ones like Dismax, Edismax, standard parcel field parsers, and of course you can use the span queries, which are also available in solar and Elasticsearch. Mm, score calculation. Uh, what we are interested, at least uh, normally, in score calculation, uh, Control over document importance, query importance, and terms and phrases importance. Of course, there are f function queries and stuff like that, but let's only remember about those. And of course, the main scoring algorithms are based on Lucene similarities. Elasticsearch has only one implementation till now because in 361 uh, we, we didn't have the uh, scoring uh, functionalities of the for all Lucene, and in Apache Solar you can have different and multiple uh, Lucene similarities, and the ease of extending and writing your own one is way, it takes less effort than in, a, than in Elasticsearch currently. Mm. So, the thing is, index time boosting, per document boost, per field boosting, and query time, like term, field, phrase, and function queries. So you all have that in Solar. In Elasticsearch, you have, again, document and field boosting, the query time. Uh, this is uh, some things that are not available uh, in Solar. Different queries provide different boost, boost controls. You can calculate distributed term frequencies, neg negative and both positive boosting, and custom score filters. The, w the thing is, is, for example, when you uh, choose one of the queries in Elasticsearch, you can say that if a document comes from that index, uh, g give it a boost of X. If, a if the document was found in the another index, give it another boost. That's pretty amazing, it's pretty fine, and can be used to uh, totally, uh, totally modify the Lucene scores returned. If you don't know Elasticsearch, you can look at, the, for example, the custom score filters, and you can, there are some examples uh, of how to use it and how can, uh, and how can it be uh, used in your real-time, uh, real-life applications. The same as negative and boost, positive, positive boosting, you can, for example, say that if that, query ma uh, that document matches that particular part of the query, 
you boost it higher, and if it, and if it only matches, for example, a term, a single term query, you, can, you negatively boost it. And it can be uh, done with a single request, with a single JSON query. Nested objects possible only in Elasticsearch. Uh, they are indexed as uh, separate documents, can, uh, can lead to uh, lessen the memory uh, needed, for example, for uh, facet queries. Well, facet queries, fa for faceting, when you need to facet on, for example, multi multiple uh, multi-valued fields like tags that have uh, a variety of values. But in order to return them, you need an appropriate queries and, quer queries and filters. Uh, and, there are, and when you search it uh, normally, they are hidden from us, uh, in the results. You don't, you don't see them. Mm, more like this uh, allows you to find similar documents. Solar, there is a more like this component that can be defined as a, as a component for your, for your search handler or can be uh, defined, configured as a standard uh, handler. Uh, in Elasticsearch, you have two queries, uh, more like this query, more like this field queries, and the MLT REST endpoint to use them more like this functionality. You can you pretty, do pretty much the same in both uh, when it comes to more like this. Uh, sole parent-child relationship, or let's call it uh, pseudo-parent-child relationship. It's used at query time, it allows multi-core joins, and it uses the join parser to allow to uh, for join documents on the fly. Uh, so if you were to, uh, I don't know who, a talk, I think Yonik, uh, there was a talk about it. In Elasticsearch, you are forced to uh, properly index those documents. So you have the parent document and all the child documents needs to be uh, pointed to that particular parent. Mm, and of course, uh, similar to the nested documents functionality, standard queries doesn't re return them. You need to, uh, in order to retrieve uh, child or parent documents, you have to use, for example, has child, has parent, top children queries, uh, that's all. In order to use filters, in both Elasticsearch and uh, let's get back. Filters allow you to narrow down your results. All, everyone knows that. There are good candidates for caching, supported by Elasticsearch and Solar, and should be used for repeatable uh, elements in the queries in, in for the most proper usage, let's call it, and for good caching. Uh, Apache Solar can have multiple filters per queries. Filters are additive. Uh, different queries parsers can be used for filters. That's very good. Local params can be used. And of course, narrow the, the filters narrow down the faceting results. You need to uh, use local params in order to, uh, you may have been on the previous talk, there was a uh, local params usage with tag and excluding of faceting results, of, filter, of filters uh, from faceting. In Elasticsearch, filter queries can be uh, specified using the standard uh, query DSL. Uh, f can be used for uh, manipulating scores, and by default, they doesn't narrow down faceting results. Uh, you have to use spe specific to faceting filters in order to uh, limit limit your facets. Filter cache control. Both Solar and Elasticsearch lets us configure, uh, control the filter cache for filters. In Solar, you have the uh, local params and the cache property, uh, and of course the cost one, which, can, uh, which allows us to uh, turn off caching for a filter, for example, for uh, geospatial filters, which uh, may not be good candidates sometimes. In Elasticsearch, we have similar functionalities. We have the cache and the cache key uh, to use uh, where, the where on under which key uh, that particular value should be stored or we can turn off the caching for a, uh, for a filter. Only a few words about faceting. Both provide common facets like term range, term statistics, in solar called statistic component. Spatial distance with function queries in solar, you can do that, uh, or range. Uh, solar, by the, uh, on the other hand, have the pivot faceting, which the Elasticsearch doesn't have. And Elasticsearch allows us to use histograms, to calculate histograms for, val for fields, mm, which is not available in solar. 
both provide real-time get, uh, which allows us to uh, get documents which were not yet indexed, uh, and uh, the NRT uh, index searcher were not reopened. Uh, Elasticsearch provides two endpoints, the get and multi-get APIs, uh, and uh, Apache Solar provides the real-time get handler uh, to, and you can add it as a, sol uh, as a handler component in order to get your results whenever they were sent to, index, uh, to indexing. Five? Wow. Where am I? Okay. Both Elasticsearch allows you to warm your caches. Let's call it like this, and let's stop it. <laughs> I'll s sorry, I'll s scroll for the... Uh, uh, scroll the caching and stuff. You can, of course, uh, monitor your cluster. Uh, in Apache Sol, there's a JMX, MBeans exposed. In Elasticsearch, you have multiple REST endpoints exposed to different statistics. You can get multiple statistics like index ones and stuff like that. Uh, just like here, node, state check, nodes information, cache statistics, in index segments and information, and mappings information can be retrieved. Uh, this is one of the my monitors. Uh, for you can do it like that, or you can do it like this, right? But uh, in addition to that, one thing I, will, I want to talk about uh, before I end is that Elasticsearch allows us to control rebalancing, recovery, allocation, and that, that above can be changed on a live cluster. Imagine that you would like, for example, to move your shards around on your cluster. For example, you know that node two and three from your cluster are, go are going to be restarted or thrown out or anything like that, you can say to Elasticsearch, hey, move the shards and replicas from that node to that node, that node, that node, and forget about it. It's done with a single API, API calls. Uh, it's actually a cluster level. Of, uh, if, you know, if you don't want to know what's about it, please get me <laughs> after. Mm, the talk, but let's go to the commands of uh, routing and moving the shards. You can see that, for example, here you can move the shard zero from the index semtex from node one to node two, and for example, an unallocated shard may be allocated to a node three. That's possible on the fly. You can do that without any problems. Mm. And now the question for you all: Who the winner is? Is it Elasticsearch? Who goes for Elasticsearch? I thought so. Not go no, throw your hands up. Okay. And is it solar? Oh, don't be shy. Maybe it's a tie. Who goes for the tie? Ah, you're n actually I think that we are all the winners around here. Because the competition is very good. Uh, we got two great search servers based on Lucene. We've got all we need, actually. If we can choose which is the best one for our current project, for our client's project, and let's hope that, stay, that it will stay that way. Um, by the way, if you want to reach me or Sematext, there's my Twitter tag, my mail, or the Sematext stuff. It's also, there are also uh, solar uh, versus elastic, uh, elastic search, sorry, uh, series of blog posts which we will continue. Uh, I think that after the conference the fifth part will be published and we will continue it. And if you are keen on working with us, we are hiring. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, do, can we change a single core uh, deployment to a multi-core? You can uh, create new collections. That's why new cores will be created uh, in the background. Because the collection API is actually uh, is using the core API. So in Sol Cloud, you are not interested basically in a single core. You are, basically, you are more interested in the whole collections. But you can, yes, you can do that. You can create a core with the collection API. Yes, please. Uh, one question. Uh, we all know that um, uh, one of the major uh, success factors of a software is the amount of companies and uh, <laughs> openness of the project. So uh, you were just only uh, concentrating on technical aspects. So can you give me your personal opinion on 
uh, who's taking the users more seriously in, in, in that, that aspect, please? Actually, if we talk about taking users seriously, uh, I don't think that uh, Elasticsearch or Solar doesn't take its users seriously. But the, uh, sorry. But the community is larger for Solar, that's for sure. We all know, uh, even here around, uh, around where we are, uh, the number of people uh, that know solar and are familiar with solar are more, gra more gra greater than the user, user base of Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is still new, so, right? It got the buzz around, I don't know, one, two years ago and it started growing. But, uh, and it's still young and uh, only a few developers out there uh, you, the commuters base of Lucene and Solar are far greater uh, than this. So if you would look like, uh, in the, uh, from that point of view, uh, uh, Solar has the advantage around here, also the Lucene. Uh, they are bound together right now after 3.0, uh, and that's also uh, quite, n quite nice because what Lucene actually currently uh, gets, it's also almost exactly, almost at the same time, point ported to solar, right? So that's one thing. You see that currently Elasticsearch waits, uh, Elasticsearch users have to wait in order to get the 0, uh, 4 0 uh, Lucene. So that's, that's if, if that's answer your questions. <laughs> uh. Okay, thank you very much once again. Have a nice conference.